Good morning. Today is Joseph Smith History, Chapter 1, verses 48 through 54. Um, and in this, he's just finishing, in the last verses, he's just finishing um, the account of Moroni's visit, what happened afterwards, and him finding the plates. Um, so, um, let's see. So after Moroni leaves him for the third time, it's morning, he has to get up and go do his daily work, his chores, those types of things. And it says that, I found my strength so exhausted as to render me entirely unable. So he's not having very much success just going about his regular life. He has this message, and usually staying up all night long has no counter effect such as that, you know. I'm sure all of us have stayed up through the night many times and had to go to work the next day, um, that sort of thing, and we've all been able to carry on and, and do our jobs. However, in this account, um, he says that he's unable to do anything. He's utterly useless. His father notices how useless he is and sends him home. He's like, go home. You're useless to me. Something's wrong. What's going on? So he's about to go home. He's trying to cross this fence and his strength leaves him completely. He, he falls to the floor and is unaware of time and space for quite some time. Then he hears a voice. It's Moroni. He says the same message again and then says, go and tell your father what I've just told you. So I found it interesting uh, that um, that he couldn't live an ordinary life. Um, by that I mean, um, by that I mean that we've all stayed up, you know. It doesn't drain, uh, sorry, drain us completely. Uh, but he tries to just go about his daily business and his, he can't even cross a fence. He's wiped out, you know, and then Moroni comes to him again, gives him the same message, tells him to do something, and he has the strength to go tell his father, then go to the hill Kimura, dig up the big rock, lift it open, find the plates. He wasn't allowed to take them, but... I, I find it interesting or, um, kind of like a aha moment or not quite as big, but t what I'm trying to say is and that when we have a message from Heavenly Father, when he sends us, uh, revelation, when he wants us or commands us to do something, and we have this big spiritual experience and, and, um, you know, we, it's this, I mean, the heavens open to Joseph Smith. And when we have a, an experience like that, we can't just go about our regular life. He's not just going to let us carry on in our regular fashion and just be okay with it. You know, once he... Like, have you ever found that where you have this experience and you try to do something and you try to live a regular life or something, it doesn't work out. And then once you decide to do what the, the message was, then your strength returns and everything works out and it's this like glorious unfolding. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to say about that? No. Oh, but here, here's the thing. So, um, 
he receives the first vision at 14 years old. Then this visit with Moroni, I can't say how old he is, but it has been a couple years since, right? So he's a couple years older. Then Moroni instructs him, instructs him that he's to be taught for four years. Come to this exact spot on this exact day every year and we're going to have some instruction. I'm going to teach you some things. So, um, again, what I find interesting or fascinating um, is that, uh, that as a teenager he was able to be taught. Uh, my experience with most teenagers is they think they know everything. And that's how I was as a teenager. Teenagers are not very humble or teachable, but Joseph Smith was. Um, I don't know. Kind of fascinating. Also, sorry, jumbled thoughts this morning, waking up early. Anyways, um, what I also found fascinating was that Joseph keeps referring to him as the messenger. You know, he doesn't say the angel Moroni or Moroni. He continues to call him the messenger. Um, by this time that he's written this account, not when he's had this experience, but when he's written this account, he's translated the Book of Mormon, I believe. Fairly certain he has. So he knows who Moroni is, right? So I thought, I don't know. Like, if the angel Moroni came to one of us, like, wouldn't you be like, oh my gosh, you're Moroni. <laughs> right? And he's just like the messenger. But I think maybe that's how it should be. Like, I don't know not fangirling out over the angels. I don't know. I just found it interesting that he's like the messenger. He was he was an angel of no consequence to him, I guess. He's no respecter of angels. I don't know. I just found it fascinating. All right. That's all I've got. I've got to get ready for work. That was Joseph Smith History, Chapter 1, verses 48 through 54. I'm going to be happy when we're out of this uh, Pearl of Great Price. I'm not very good at it. All right. Have a good day. I love you all, and I'll talk to you later.